Hi, my name is Felicia Gath. I am one of the district ed tech facilitators, and I am here to talk to you all about synchronous learning and asynchronous learning. The reason we want to make sure that everyone understands the difference between the two learning styles is because we want to make sure that we're providing our students with the very best instructional platform and teaching style that will meet the needs of the content that you are presenting. The other part of it is, is that there are advantages and disadvantages to using each learning style that we will discuss during this presentation. So let's go in and just talk about what is synchronous and asynchronous learning. Synchronous learning is when you are online uh, with your students and learning is happening in real time meaning that you can engage with your students, you can have conversations, you all can respond back and forth to each other in real time. Uh, you don't have to wait for another form of communication in order to hear feedback from your students or to provide feedback to your students. So synchronous learning can take place in a classroom setting, but it can also take uh, place uh, in an online chat room, a video conference, or even using web conferencing applications, uh, using things such as Google Meets or even Microsoft Teams. Asynchronous learning is online learning activities that may happen at a different time from the real-time instruction. So let's give the example that maybe we have a student who is out on, on quarantine. And so that student may not be able to join the lesson at the time that it is being presented to the entire class, but they will still have access to the lesson and the activities that they may be able to complete in their, at their own pace. And so this would even include assessments the students may need some guidance or they just may not be able to join at the time. Maybe they're at a doctor's appointment or maybe they're not feeling well at that time. So this still gives them access to the learning as well as to the activities or assessments that are taking place in class. When we think about synchronous learning, again, there are advantages and disadvantages to both learning styles. Uh, Synchronous learning advantages would include that the instructor is able to interact with multiple students in real time, um, making group activities possible, as well as being able to provide immediate feedback, being able to have conversations with the students, to clear up any misconceptions, as well as to possibly do some self-correcting. Uh, it gives the instructor and the student opportunities to really be able to communicate with each other uh, without having to worry about uh, leaving a message or sending an email or waiting for a response to a particular problem or issue. But the disadvantages when we look at synchronous learning is that uh, we have to make sure that everyone is getting on at the same time, we have to make sure that the um, devices that are being used will stay uh, online, that we will be able to continuously communicate with those, that the pace of the instruction may not match that of the students. So there's a possibility that some students may be left behind. Uh, students may not receive as much individual attention as they may need with the instruction so, because you are trying to keep within a time frame. And so that can be uh, a disadvantage to the students as well as to the teacher, especially because you are not able to even walk around and support those students. Asynchronous learning also has advantages and disadvantages. Some of their main advantages is that the learner can study at any time and any pace according to their own needs. The students have the ability to go back to pieces they need to brush up on, and there's an opportunity to review outside resources to aid instruction. But the disadvantages of asynchronous learning is that limited access to an instructor 
and or getting answers in real time. Some students may struggle without constant guidance and interaction, and not all instruction is best suited for self-paced learning. So when you are preparing your lesson and uh, for your students, you want to make sure that you are determining which is the best type of learning. So things that you should, should think about is think about each approach and how your content and audience fit to ensure you reach uh, your learning objective, the students and their learning needs, and then the type of content uh, that you are presenting. Another consideration is also what devices that your students have available as well as uh, their internet, making sure that they have access to be able to be online to receive the instruction. Uh, some examples would be when content is easy to, uh, to digest or in reflection of a complex issue, asynchronous would be the right move to make. Uh, if the nature of the content is vital in determining the style of learning, uh, should your content be filled with complex ideas and technical terms, you may want to find asynchronous is not the best approach. You might think synchronous would be the best approach in that situation. And finally, if the availability of your learners as well as their access to internet are important in making decisions on your approach. So I hope this was helpful to you all. I hope that you were able to see the difference and see the importance in knowing the difference between asynchronous and synchronous learning when it comes to choosing your teaching uh, technique or style for uh, any particular instruction or lesson. Thank you for attending. Again, my name is Felicia Gap. You can reach me at fbrumfield at ebrschools.org if you have any additional questions or concerns or if you would like more information. Thank you.